This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hey, what's up? This is Int80 from Dual Core. I wanted to share some cool things you could do with Provoxy. Provoxy is a free, local, non-caching web proxy, um, and it does a lot of cool things right out the box, like blocking annoying JavaScript pop-ups. If you're like me, you've been using Provoxy for some time. Um, I started using it because it adds uh, privacy in when you're browsing with Tor. Um, so there's a lot of neat stuff you can do with it, and I've written some code to add some other cool things you can do. The first thing is blocking ad domains. There's a website out there, pgl.yoyo.org, um, and the guy that runs that, or the lady, I don't know, whoever runs that maintains a list of domains that just serve ads. So uh, if you're not interested in a bunch of ads being sent to your computer, you can grab this list, feed it in to different sources, um, and block traffic to those domains. It's offered in a lot of different formats, like you can set up zones in bind 9 so that your DNS requests don't go out to those domains, or you could set them up in like your WRT54G, but there's no Provoxy setup. So um, I was talking with my homie at TJ McGrew on Twitter. Um, we were talking at uh, Indiana Linux Fest earlier in the year about this list of domains. He's a big Python guy, so kind of like as, a, as props to him. I wrote this tool in Python that goes out, grabs this list of domains, parses it out, sets it up, and adds it into Provoxy so that when you're browsing through Provoxy, um, you don't make all these requests out to any of these domains. So I called the script Privloxy. I couldn't come up with a good name, sorry. But it's a pretty easy script, um, pretty simple, not a lot to it really. Um, we've got Provoxy installed to, our, to its default location, which is under C program files, Provoxy. Um, if you install it somewhere else, just change the path in the Python script. And then uh, there's this add list URL, um, which is the URI where you can uh, download the list. And so all that the script does is it goes out, downloads um, this list, and sets up an action file in Provoxy. Provoxy has a bunch of different action files in its main config um, that it includes in, uh, and you can configure them individually. Running the privbloxy Python script is very easy, and all it does is just add an entry to tie in the uh, ad domains that it downloaded for you. So you set up Python, uh, run your privbloxy script, we've got it copied into our privoxy directory, you can put it anywhere, just give it the full path, and you'll see that your main privoxy configuration changes. Now you've got this additional action file that's got a list of domains that serve up ads, and they're automatically blocked by privoxy. So, now when you're out browsing, if you go to a website and that website pulls in ads from one of these listed ad servers, your traffic or your requests get blocked, um, and so that way you don't see any of the, uh, you don't see any of the ads from the ad servers. Kind of a neat little add-on. Uh, apologies to the Hack5 sponsors if you're in that list. I don't think you are though. Another cool use with Provoxy is proxying your SOX traffic. So like I said, when I first started using uh, Provoxy, it was to um, add some additional privacy in when I was browsing the web through Tor. Um, Tor uses a SOX proxy. Uh, it uses port 9050 by default. Um, but there are other, other uses with SOX proxies as well. Now, Provoxy comes set up already to make it really easy to use or tie in with Tor. Um, if you just search for 9050, again, the default port for Tor, uh, you'll find in the config file that there's already a line, it's just currently commented out. So if you uncomment it, restart Provoxy, you're set to start browsing with Tor through Provoxy. Um, for me, when I do my normal web browsing, I SSH out through dualcoremusic.com. So I'll start up an SSH tunnel and I'll set a local SOX listener on say like port 8888. Um, and then that way I point my browser through there and browse out through my SSH tunnel so all the traffic hitting the internet comes out through my server. Um, in this case, if I want to do that, instead of 9050, I would just have 8888. Now you're browsing with socks and thinking with portals. Pretty easy. Again, tying in Provoxy for some additional uses makes it pretty nice. We've covered blocking ad domains and we've covered browsing with your socks traffic. Now, if you've ever used Provoxy, you notice like when you start it up that you get this weird window. And it's like this, it's like a notepad window, but it doesn't have like the same features or functionality. Um, and there's no way to turn it off. Like even if you click in the sys tray, 
um, and say like, don't show the window. It still comes up the next time you boot. Uh, I, hadn't find, I hadn't found any ways in the, uh, in the configs to turn it off, so I went looking for myself. Um, it doesn't matter how you start Provoxy, it always shows up. Uh, it's like it's there if you register Provoxy as a service, it's there if it's just in your start menu, startup stuff. So I, I went looking through the code myself just to go ahead and turn it off. Okay, so we've taken the provoxy.exe and we've thrown it in a debugger. In our debugger, we're using Immunity Debugger. It's free from ImmunitySec, just go ahead and Google it online. Great product, I like it a lot. So if you've ever done any Windows API programming and you're thinking, what calls start a window or show a window? Um, you might be thinking create window or show window. And if you're thinking those, you're right. So what we did is we go ahead and we set our breakpoint on show window in the command bar, and then we run immunity debugger. And we see that, boom, we've hit a breakpoint, um, and we've got this show state of show default. It's got a value of A in hex, or 10 in decimal. And so if we go ahead and modify that, because it's saying show the window in its default state, like its normal state. But we want to show the window in a hidden state. So um, let's go ahead and modify that. And instead of value of A, let's set 0, because that's the constant for hide. So that way, when the show window call finishes executing, the, uh, the main window, that annoying window that pops up with Provoxy, is hidden. So we've modified it in memory to hide. And we run it, and boom. You'll notice in the bottom right-hand corner, Immunity Debugger says that uh, Provoxy is running. If you look in your SysTray, you'll see the Provoxy icon, but we didn't get that stupid, annoying window. Now, the change that we made is only in memory. That means if we reboot our system or we reload the VM or whatever, that change to the file hasn't happened. It's only in memory right now. And our Provoxy.exe lives on the hard drive. So what we need to go in, what we need to go do is change the instructions in the provoxy.exe code so that it passes in that hide default, but we need to do it on the disk so that every time we boot up, we get the, uh, the window being hidden. I've written a real simple C program that uh, goes ahead and uh, does the patch for you, and uh, it's nice and easy, so I'll show that to you now. I've copied the provoxy patcher, um, which will also be available on my GitHub. Uh, over to the Provoxy directory, and whoops, I mistyped. It's one C, one dot. And it's real simple. It just looks for the sequence of instructions that are originally there that we want to change. It notes down that offset and goes into, uh, goes into the buffer and replaces those instructions. Real simple patch, no problem. All it does is change it so that we're handing in a zero value now, um, for our show window hide instead of show default. And it writes the, uh, writes the buffer back out to file, so now we've got a modified version of our provoxy.exe, nice and easy. Um, make sure that if you've got your provoxy.exe in, open in the debugger and you just want to apply this patch, that you close it in the debugger. Otherwise, the patch won't be able to open the file and get a handle to it. Um, running the patch is real easy. We've got the exe copying in the same directory as provoxy. Um, but you just run your provoxypatcher.exe and then give it the path to the provoxy binary. Um, and it'll go ahead, open it up, scan through, read it into memory, scan through the memory, find the offset, make the patch for you, and close it back out. And so that's all there is to it. It's actually pretty simple. And in the end, when you go ahead and run provoxy, uh, you don't get that annoying window that pops up. Um, so yeah, so we blocked a bunch of ad domains. Um, we've proxied our SOX traffic, whether it's SSH or Tor or some other protocol. Um, and we've patched Provoxy so that we don't see the annoying notepad-ish type window. Um, there's a lot of other cool stuff you can do with Provoxy, but all my code that I've shown in this segment is gonna be up on my GitHub. It's github.com github slash int0x80, int80. And, um, I'm int80 on the forums with the same spelling. If you want to join on the Hack5 forums, give me a shout there. I'm at Dual Core Music on Twitter. Uh, and as always, you can hit us up with questions or comments or anything else at feedback at hack5.org. SJ every day. 
Domain.com is owning the competition with cheap domain names and hassle-free service. Our Hack5 fans are making Domain.com one of the fastest growing domain registrars in the world. And if you're setting up a website to show off the pictures of your cat, brag about your new boating skills, or do something business related, Domain.com is the best place to buy a domain name for your new idea. Domain.com's easy checkout process makes it simple to find your domain name and set up your website without hassles. Domain.com's domain discovery system quickly shows you available names, making it easy to select the domain extension that's right for you. Find a suite.com or get a .co and save a character. Already have a domain somewhere else? It's cool. Transfer it to Domain.com for only $7.61 and get an extra year free. The guys at Domain.com are huge fans of Hack5 and they want to hook up other Hack5 fans. Use the coupon code HAK5 and get 15% off your next domain purchase or transfer. It's only $6.47 for transfers. Don't forget, when you think domain names, think domain.com. It's time once again for the nibble, and this week Did sends in a nice little script about backing up one server to another. It can seem like a daunting task, especially if you're trying to, say, create a tar.gzip archive on the first server without having enough disk space for it. Let's say you want to back up the entire root of the file system from the first server to a second server, and you only have SSH access to them. Well, then this script starts by first creating a tar.gz archive, but instead of actually creating it locally, it's piping it straight into the other server. It's done quite simply. Tar CVPZF tack slash or wherever you want to start backing up and then pipe that to SSH your user at the host in quotes cat and then greater than slash whatever your backup tar gz whatever your file name may be. So the dash is actually what's telling it telling tar to pipe instead of doing it locally while the cat is simply taking those bits and putting them into a file. And keep in mind of course for all of you out there nodding, yes, you could do dd instead of tarring it, but this is just one way to do it because as we know there's so many ways to skin cats not like we like cat skinning, I'm just saying. We like nibbles, and if you've got one and you want to share it with us, hack5.org slash nibble is the place to share us your four bits. <laughs>